of this episode of Ghost Hunters International. Norway beckons the GHI team to investigate a fortress with a murderous spirit. After she became a ghost, she pushed him off the cliff. Her spirit pushed him off the cliff. Yes. Barry and Susan hear the screams of a 400-year-old homicide. That's creepy. Oh, my camera gets, like, fuzzed out. And Rob may be an eyewitness to the killer. Then, GHI travels to the former Soviet bloc to check out the legend of the Devil's Wedding. If Satan is here, maybe you could make a sound. In Estonia, can Rob and Brandy beat the Devil? What was that? So why don't you let us know exactly what we're looking at here? Okay, well, we're going to Fredriksen Fortress in Holland in Norway. And this place was built in the later part of the 17th century. And it was built because Norway wanted to defend their land against the Swedes. Fredriksen Fortress was named after King Frederick III of Denmark and Norway. All right, Brandy, so as far as uh, stories of paranormal activity, what do we have? Well, we actually have a lot of visual stuff going on here. We have full-bodied apparitions. We have a lot of shadow activity happening all throughout the fortress. Now, there is a story about a lady in white that has been seen, and a lot of people kind of think she's more of an aggressive spirit. Now, our clients called us in because he's worked there for several years, and he's had some experiences himself. He wants to really get some answers as far as what's really going on. Hello, sir. Hello. Rob. Welcome to Frederick Stan Fortress. Thank you. Hello. Welcome. How you doing? Welcome. Now, this place is huge. Uh, can you start by telling us a little bit about the history? It was constructed, started in uh, 1661, and it's built as a border fortress towards the mighty, strong Sweden. And uh, it has been attacked for uh, six times in different campaigns, never conquered in battle. So we are very proud of this site, as you understand. So could you take us around and show us where the paranormal activity has been reported? Yes, we'll do that. All right, let's so go take a look. Let's All right. Ready. And now, guys, we are the highest spot of the fortress. In this location, there is numerous reports of uh, people seeing the white lady. The story about her is that uh, she became a victim of uh, abusement from her employee, probably the commander, and she committed suicide by jumping off this bastion. But after she became a ghost, she was then a bad ghost. She wanted uh, revenge on her bad destiny. And she uh, took the life, uh, killed her lieutenant by pushing him off the cliff. Her spirit pushed him off the yes. cliff. Yes, that's, that's the story. Is the white lady still seen around this area? Yes, she's still seen around her. The white lady has been seen around the fortress. I've seen it myself. Looks like a white mist or something. Now, guys, I will show you an interesting sight. In this wall here, it's called the envelope. So as you see, this wall going around her is an envelope, it's a verb. And in cases, in cases of fortress. Yes. We have an interesting uh, ghost report here. What I saw was a soldier that limped up the hills. I followed him, and he walked right inside the envelopen entrance. I continued after him inside the envelopen and shouted, is there anyone here? No one answered. There was nobody inside the bunker. Now we enter the bunker. And this first room we are now standing in is the uh, shelter for the uh, gun crew. 
and you have two stairs up each end. So the apparition was seen coming into this area? Yes. The stairs we went, he came after this, uh, this ghost, and when he entered in there, there was no one. Might be a good opportunity to uh, use the laser system um, to see if we can get any sort of um, photographic evidence or even video evidence of the uh, apparition. Okay. Interesting. We got it covered. We'll, we'll see what we can find for you. Shall we head on? Yes, we will. We are now entering uh, the ground floor of this small restaurant. And uh, here a uh, special incident took place. It's not just me, but all the chefs and apprentices has uh, had that feeling when they are alone. We can just see on the stairs that someone is coming up and uh, go past, coming into the room or something. And when we uh, look, it's no one there. All right, shall we head out? Yes, we go for room. Well, what do you think? I think this place is incredible. I mean, it's definitely a challenge because of the size of the location, but we're up for it. I think we have the technology available and ready. We're excited. We're ready to go. Just a pleasure. All right. We'll see you soon. We look forward to seeing the results. Fredrickson Fortress is a gigantic location. Stories of white ladies, these apparitions being seen, are quite common in the paranormal realm. However, the idea that they might actually push someone to their death is very rare. She's been seen numerous times and all over the grounds. So each team member is going to have to be on their toes and aware of their surroundings. That's it. All right, Barry, we good to go? Yeah, Rob, we're all set. We put a camera in the armory. We've got two cameras in the restaurant, one on the ground floor, and the second is on the second floor to capture any of the movement reported coming up the stairs. Looks good. OK. Barry's got the DVR recording ready to go. Cameras look great. Paul, I believe you have a new laser. We do. Um, yeah, the new laser is basically uh, going to be set up in the envelope and hopefully will allow us to uh, capture the apparition that's been seen. Let's get the lights out and get to work. said to be seen. The apparition shoved someone off a cliff. So it's one of the more violent white ladies I've ever encountered. Ashley and I came up to the bell tower uh, to try and track down the story of the apparition of a white lady who has been seen here. Can I take some full spectrum shots? We can cover the whole area with these shots. And if we back that up with a the thermal so we can make sure that we're not confusing anything in the shot, with, um, you know, animals, other teams. EVP session, this is Ashley and Rob on the cliff where the white lady's been seen. If you're up here, what's your name? Did you lose someone here? The heck is that? Full spectrum shots. What the heck is that? What's that? That's that rock over there. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We know that the story is that the woman's gonna throw someone off, right? Yeah. All right, well, let's give him a target. One of the stories is that the white lady pushed an individual, a soldier, off this very cliff. So I wanted to see what would happen. She here yet? I'm not seeing her. Now, if you're angry at someone, you can take your anger out on me. You know, I identify with the lieutenant. I'm sure you thought you had reason to be angry with him, but He's dead, and you're just stuck wandering around here. If you want to try and do something, now's your chance. It's a long way down, I'm waiting for you to make your move.
And I live to ghost hunt another day. Wow. We used a full spectrum camera, we used a thermal camera, a handy cam, so we came prepared and uh, we'll see how we did later on. I think we've covered this area pretty well for now. Yeah. All right, let's pack it up. Okay. Brandy and I headed in the envelope and there has been the report of an apparition of a man, possibly a soldier, limping into this room um, and then simply disappearing. Now, I think I'm gonna set this up here. Okay. We used an experimental tool in the envelope and uh, the laser burst. Now, we've used it a few times previous. However, this is actually a newer version. This actually has a wider burst. Now, the idea behind it is something walks in the way of it. Mm -hmm. the, the camera will actually pick up that there's a distortion in the, uh, right. the dots in the burst. Yeah. In theory, because of the amount of dots and what, we could even perhaps make out what shape it is. EVP session. Paul and Brandy were in the envelope and... Can you give us your name? Were you a soldier here? You've been seen limping into this building. Are you injured? When did you die? Were you killed during one of the battles? Is there something that we can do for you? Is there a message that we can pass on for you? Just please speak clearly, speak loudly. Maybe we'll be able to pass that message on. Are you Norwegian? Or are you Swedish? Perhaps you were killed by the Norwegians. If there's anyone in here with us, can you make a noise? Ending EVP session, Paul and Brandy, envelope and I think we should leave this running for a while. Yeah. This particular version of the laser burst also has a camera mounted. So this basically means we can leave that particular area and just let that record, taking any sort of contamination out of the room and allowing us to actually record and see what happens. Ashley and I came to investigate the commander's house where there's been reports of um, feelings of nausea, feelings of uneasiness, um, to kind of cater to those reports and look for what could be the source. I don't even know what's up here. So it looks like they got some period clothes for reenactments. That's a cute hat. Yeah. Um, what the hell's going on? Whoa. What's going on? I don't know. My camera just, like, fuzzed out. And then there was something weird in it for a second. No, this thing went, like, really crazy fuzzy. And then there was, like, a circular round thing in the center. And then it went back to normal. Hmm. At one point, my full-spectrum handicam seemed to malfunction. There was, like, an oval shape, like, almost the shape of a face in the camera. Mm -hmm. I'll have to get some eyes on it. Commander, I hope you don't mind that we were trying on some of your the wardrobe, the clothing that's here. No issue with that? Can you make a noise? Can do log and lid. Fire did Navin. What's your name? We asked some EVP questions in Norwegian as well as English to see what kind of uh, response could possibly come forward. Obviously, we're struggling with our Norwegian. Could you give us some indication that you speak English? The uh, commander is remaining relatively quiet at the moment. Let's shut it down and, uh, See what we got. So we'll have to go back, go through the evidence, and see if perhaps something paranormal was picked up. I need you to give a scan of this entire area. 
Let me know if there's any unusual heat signatures in it. Susan and I were on our way up to Warrant where the white lady was reported to be seen. We brought the thermal and the 360 mic with us. All of a sudden, we heard what sounded like a woman screaming. Susan and I were on a thermal sweep where the white lady was said to have appeared, and we started to hear screaming. Can you hear that? I had never heard anything like that before. That's crazy. So just as quickly as those screams appeared, they seemed to have disappeared. We weren't able to uh, determine the source of the screams. We'll have to listen to the recordings uh, more closely going into analysis. Paul and I headed into the restaurant. Let's now do some investigating about the shadow, moving up the stairs. EVP session. Paul and Brandy were in the restaurant. I'm actually half Norwegian. My grandfather is uh, full blooded. I do know a couple phrases. Mit Nagne er Brandy. Did you er Paul? Worden fant du da? Kommer hit er du snil. Vostra du? Love. During the investigation, I decided to do an EMF sweep. Whoa. Well, this exit sign gives off quite a bit of EMF, yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's up to 8.11, 33.2, wow. 37. That's crazy. 36, like that. You know, an emergency exit sign was giving off a huge amount of EMF. This can cause someone to see things. I'm gonna put it over by the stairs. I'm gonna move this yeah, whole spectrum just... over here and get more of a wider shot. Place that here. <clears throat> Whoa, it's reading a 1.4. What's under these stairs? I wanna know what's um... under these stairs. A fridge. Ow, you bugger. Well, there's nothing else electrical under there. You know what I'm gonna do? Unplug the fridge. Yep, now I put it back in. It's the fridge. So again, people having feelings of things in the room, feelings on the stairs, could be the fact that these little fridges is giving off a massive EMF signal. So Brandy and I have come up with a few possible explanations. EVP session in. We do have a DVR camera facing the staircase, so if an apparition does appear, we'll have that on film. All right, everyone, that sun coming up means it's time for us to go home. Let's get everyone back to Command Central and pack it up. Investigating from dusk to dawn does have its consequences. We are absolutely shattered. All I want to do is get back to our hotel and sleep. This has been a fantastic investigation. Hopefully, we've got some uh, apparition evidence as well. Fredrickston Fortress certainly was a large location for us. We have mountains of stuff to go through, but the case itself has never really been investigated before. It really is one of those virgin cases that you just don't know what you're going to find. Hey, Barry. This
This is actually um, really disturbing. Just give it a listen. <laughs> It's not Paul doing karaoke, it's not by any chance, is it? No. <laughs> you don't want to see. You don't want to hear that. Hello. 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 Thanks for isolating those sounds, Ashley. Now I can hear them much more clearly. I have actually heard this before while backpacking in Ireland. That was the fox cries coming from the from the field. Wow, it sounded like child being murdered or exactly. something. Exactly. The female fox, the vixen, she'll call for her mates and then they'll fight over and those cries will happen. I'm, I'm glad you got to listen to that. <laughs> I can't miss that one. And uh, onward we go. Hey, Ashley. Yeah? You and Rob, when you were in the attic area of the commander's house, mm -hmm. have been analyzing the footage of the full spectrum video you and Rob were taking, and you said you thought you saw a face. Yes. I got the face. Okay, guys, back again after a long night's work. Yep. I'm very curious how your investigation went on. Throughout the night, we went to do two things. The first one being looking at the stories that we were told by yourself and looking for those alternative explanations. How could these things have happened in a non-paranormal way? Now, we were investigating with a full-spectrum handicam, looking for any possible apparitions in the commander's house. Looking right at me from the viewfinder, I see what appears to me to be a face. Really? <laughs> Absolutely, and we want to show you that. Okay, so this is Ashley and I in the commander's house. We're up in the attic. Mm -hmm. Now, during that time, the camera seems to malfunction. Now, watch towards the end here. Here we go. There. I see what appears to me to be a face. Oh, really? And back to normal. Now, I'm looking at this little viewfinder saying, if that's not a face, I don't know what is, and I don't know where it came from. To me, what almost looks like this kind of sword earring here. Yes. And during the analysis process, Brandy comes across this next image. And there's our coat rack earring. So you can see on the left-hand side where this area was one ear, you can see where the infrared is forming the circle of the face. And because of it being disjointed during a malfunction, it did momentarily appear to be a face. That was a really interesting explanation. After going through every videotape, and we're talking 10, 15 hours of yep. video, even more hours of audio, unfortunately, the most infamous apparition seen here at the fortress, the white lady decided not to make an appearance. There was nothing during our investigation to indicate the presence of paranormal activity. Nothing uh, recordable, at least. No. Uh, I had uh, thought that you might have been able to record something here. Even though I'm disappointed it wasn't a ghost, I'm, I'm very happy with your explanation. All right, well, on that note, we want to thank you for bringing us here, and it has been a great experience. And I wish you very good luck for the rest of your tour. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. When someone will try to convince me I've got a photo of a ghost, I will be a little bit more skeptical, but we still have this myth about uh, the ghosts here at the uh, Credit Extent Fortress. No, Barry, after talking to our client, you can see he was really happy about the conclusions we mm -hmm. came to. Mm -hmm. Strong case. All in all, it was a wonderful location. To be here in Norway, to see that fort and what that history meant for the rest of Europe, it was nice to be there and investigate. Absolutely. Well, that's it. Job done. Let's get the rest and move on to the next. Keep it moving. So we're pulling into Tallinn, Estonia, um, where I think we have quite an interesting legend here and some paranormal activity to go with it. The Devil's Wedding. And Brandy's going to give us some details. Now, where we're headed to, it's called the Old House in the old part of Tallinn. The story goes that uh, in the 16th century, the landlord of the Old House was spying on this wedding party 
and that he claims to have seen the devil himself at the wedding. And the next day, the landlord died. A lot of the guests have been experiencing apparitions appearing throughout the location. Disembodied voices and footsteps, as well as different types of noises like knocks. Client's name is Christian, and he wants to be able to give these people some answers, whether they're alternative explanations or, you know, something else. We're excited for a big case, big combination of legend and paranormal activity, and uh, we'll see how we do. Christian. Ryan. Nice to you? meet you. Nice to meet you. Barry. Good to see you. Paul. Nice to meet you. You too. Perfect. I wanted the Ghost Hunters International team to investigate paranormal activities that have been happening here for over 200 years. Party noises, knockings on the door, footsteps. If you could show us kind of where all the activity is taking place. Yeah, of course. All right, after you. The owner of this house had one visitor. An older, respectable man, home in black, and he wanted to rent one room for wedding. And he paid very good to the uh, owner of house, but he had one special wish. Nobody could visit these rooms during wedding. When evening began, music, noise, laughing, Owner of house wanted to see which guests are in his room, and he cooked into the opening in door and was afraid. He said to his wife, he saw devil, and it was devil's wedding. Soon after this, he died. So this is apartment number six, the apartment where the devil's wedding took place. So as far as activity, has anything happened actually in apartment six? People have heard parting noises coming from this apartment. I wanted to stay in each apartment. We stayed apartment number six. The house was empty. I was started sleeping. My friend Arne woke me and asked, Jaya, do you hear? I heard medieval music. It lasted 50 minutes. It is very, very, very strange. She wanted me to go out to the bed and check where it came from, but I was reluctant to do that. I, I don't know where it came from, but uh, it was certainly not from outside. It was from the, from the house somewhere. I heard it. I, I, I know there was something there, and I cannot explain it. All right, shall we head on? Now we're heading to apartment number four, okay. which is below apartment number six. Mm. So this is where the, numerous times you were saying that the guests have actually heard people above them when it should be empty. There were sounds like uh, the glasses were clinking or some noises of plates or dishes, or etc. So now we're in apartment number two. Has there been any uh, reports of paranormal activity in this area? Yeah, there has been stories about footsteps and also a Soviet pilot in the bedroom right here. Come and take a look. Once I was uh, sleeping uh, at apartment number two, and I woke up, I opened my eyes, and I saw a person uh, looking at me on a uh, Russian pilot uniform. I closed my eyes again, and I tried to remember who uh, could it be. And I opened again my eyes, and the person was gone. Do you know anything about the history of the location, anything that may have happened around here that would connect to a Soviet pilot? Estonia was under Soviet occupation, mm -hmm. so right. uh, it might have been connected to that. Absolutely. So this concludes my story at uh, Old House. Well, I want to thank you for bringing us in. The mix of the legend and the more modern paranormal activity is definitely going to present a challenge for us. We're going to grab the rest of the team, get to work, and uh, see you in a couple days after we went through everything and let you know how we did. See you. Thanks. 
tonight, I'm using a POV camera. This is a point of view camera. When we're holding our handheld camcorders, we think we see something, and the camera may well actually be pointing in a completely different direction. If I do happen to see anything tonight, it'll be caught on the camera. We have to hit this place in an organized progression, make sure that every area is being covered with EMF work, EVP work, thermal. Everything needs to get covered top to bottom. In this camera angle, Rob, we're covering the staircase and there are reports of the footsteps. We want to make sure that no one is, is moving around that location mm -hmm. once it's being reported. This camera angle is covering apartment number two uh, where the reports of the Soviet pilot are said to, to appear. This camera angle is in apartment number six where the legend says that the devil's wedding took place. We're covering this uh, to make sure that nothing is moving. We can see that on, on camera. Let's get the equipment and get the lights out. Okay. and legendary room number six okay. where the wedding was said to have transpired mm -hmm. you know the devil was here and this that and the other so let's get set up see what we got it was an evp session with brandy and rob in room number six some people have been telling the story now that the devil himself was once in this area what is the name of the man who rented this apartment? What is the name of the bride? We came here to find out who threw the party here and why the spirits remain. Right. Hmm? I just heard someone walking upstairs. Some people have been telling the story now that the devil himself was once in this area. Hmm? I just heard something. What did it sound like? Just like someone walking upstairs. It's not, there's no one out here. When Rob was running an EVP session, I started hearing um, what sounded like uh, footsteps. Pretty loud, Bill, loud enough to really draw my attention. I ran out and I checked, no one was there. Someone's starting to join us? Is a party getting started now? I'd like to enjoy the fun that all the party guests seem to be experiencing here years after the event. Why did you choose this place out of all the places? What was that? What? That's exactly what I heard. I swear, it's coming from this direction, too. I don't know. There's no one down here. Um, what we need to do is get a glass of water from the kitchen. Susan and I decided to investigate the apartment one. The reports coming from this apartment is that um, a gentleman asked for a glass of water and some black bread. And the following morning, when they came back into his room, asked him if there was something wrong with it, as he hadn't eaten it. Um, to which he replied, it's not for me, it was for the spirits. So we decided we wanted to try and recreate the appeasement of the spirit by also bringing up a glass of water and some black bread. Is there anyone in here with us right now who would like to, to make themselves known to us? Can you give us a sign that you are here? Can you please let us know who you are? Maybe speak into the little device over here. It can record your voice. Just let me know you're in the room. I don't think you're going to get another opportunity to have your bread and water again. Why don't you do something about it now that we're here? Because if you don't do something, I'll do something. Just got to give us a sign that you're here. All right? You had your chance. How does this make you feel? That. That is disgusting. And dry and somewhat stale. Maybe that's why you didn't want the bread. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. 
<laughs> oh, it's got a horrible aftertaste. All right, so let's end this EVP session. Yeah, yeah. We attempted to get some sort of communication. It wasn't happening. So I decided to provocate. Um, best way I know how is to eat the bread. And we will see when it comes to analysis whether or not I piss somebody off. Let's, let's go down here a little bit. So I said I came to apartment number two. We wanted to explore the claims of the spirits of an alleged Soviet pilot. If you were the Soviet pilot that was seen here, do not be afraid. Can you tell us your rank? Were you killed in the line of duty? Could you walk up to me? Could you walk in front of my friend over there in the corner? He wants to take a picture of you. What was that? I don't know. It sounded like it came from over your direction. I thought it was coming from your direction. No. That's very strange indeed. Was that you trying to get our attention? Did you hear that? I did. The Cold War is now over. There is peace. I'm not American. I'm from Ireland. If you are listening to us right now, could you walk across this room? Okay, Miss Ashley. Let's move along. While Barry and I were running an EVP session, we were we were sort of hearing really strange noises, and we couldn't specify exactly where the noises were coming from. We had a bunch of equipment running, so hopefully we might be able to figure out exactly what that was. Apartment number six. Barry and I decided to uh, investigate uh, apartment six. We know that the story of the Devil's Wedding sounds preposterous. But however, the legend has been around for hundreds of years, and there are some legitimate claims of paranormal activity to go along with it. If the entity of the Devil is able to understand us, I wish he would be able to enter apartment number six, the apartment we're now in. And please give us a sign, give us an indication that you were here. If Satan is here, maybe you could make a sound. We would most certainly like to know more about you. I also want to invite any of the other entities associated with this building and ask that you too do something to uh, let us know that you were here by moving an object banging a wall or walking the floor. You know, throughout the entire case, mm -hmm. I've never wanted to use the word summon. <laughs> summon. And for some reason, in this room, I want to use the word, I summon. I wonder if that's just playing in the back of my mind because of the legend. Yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody, good investigation tonight. Let's get the lights on and meet up at Command Central. I think that tonight's investigation went really well. I know the teams were looking for the alternative explanations as well as trying to document anything paranormal. So at this point, we'll get some rest, go through everything, and see if anything paranormal might have come up. Going into the analysis now of the old house here in Tallinn in Estonia, the place where it was alleged the devil was said to have had his wedding. Hopefully we're going to be able to bring something through to show if the place is haunted or not. Barry, this is an apartment six. Maybe you can give me some insight as to what that is. That's the full spectrum camera. When you put it onto video mode, sometimes you would get that noise from the shutter mechanism as it's trying to refocus uh, itself. Um, and sometimes it goes, it can get noisy as it continues on over a period of time. Right, at least now I'm familiar with that sound, so if I ever hear it again, I can just write it off and not really pay too much attention to it. All right, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Barry, I 
I do believe I have captured the sound of the footsteps you guys heard while you were doing the EVP session with Ashley. I just like to confirm that that's exactly okay. what it is. Holy crap. Hi. How goes it? Well, fine. How, how was the investigation? You gave us quite a task. I mean, when we're talking about the legend of the devil's wedding right off the bat, that's a huge order. And then the hundreds of years of paranormal activity that's been reported since then. I think that we have here a collection of answers to a lot of the questions of paranormal activity you pose for us. Ashley and I, we were conducting an EVP session, apartment number two, where there were claims of footsteps being heard. And what we want to do is show you a video. I want you to listen for the sound that, that accompanies this. What was that? I don't know. It's really interesting because similar thing that the owner said that uh, he heard when he was living there. Yeah, exactly. But because of the way we have our cameras set up and we had the team organized, we can tell that it's coming from elsewhere into apartment number two. Okay. Now, Paul and, and Susan were investigating in apartment one um, and they were rapping against the wall and that sound was being carried across into apartment number two. Okay, so, so the timing uh, we heard the uh, noise from apartment number one and number two were exactly at the same at exactly the same time. Exactly at the same time. As you can hear for yourself. Behind here, nothing in there. See, what it could be is there could be a joist. That, that might explain that uh, on both apartments uh, that sounds are being heard. Mm -hmm. Now, Brandy and I investigated apartment number six, the legend of the devil's wedding itself. Brandy heard a loud sound. She heard it again. Now she says, that's, that's coming from the stairs. I walked the stairs and waited. A few seconds after I passed some of these steps, they bow down, pop back up. Yeah. Sounds like step after step after step of someone heading on their way up to the legend of apartment number six. Yeah, this, is, this sounds logical. It might pop up. So here's what we've come up with. There was no appearance of any satanic forces. Uh, the devil didn't show up for us. But as far as paranormal activity, there wasn't evidence of the paranormal. Uh, on my side, uh, on the side of the uh, apartment business, it's good to hear that no paranormal activity uh, has been found uh, on your side. Christian, it's been a pleasure. Really nice to meet you guys. You too. All right, shall we head out? Yeah. It gives me answers, and it's more easier to explain to the customers that uh, where these noises might be coming from. The legend uh, comes from the 16th century, and I don't believe that the legend will uh, vanish. So guys, how did the Christian take the reveal? Oh, Christian was thrilled. We did what we came in to do. We came up with those alternatives. Our client's happy. I'm happy. The legend of the Devil's Wedding is going to live on even as we head out of Estonia, but uh, on to the next one. Paul, um, I just got a voicemail um, on my cell phone. Um, it comes directly from the Devil's office. He wasn't in, but he will direct his attention to you when he gets the time. <laughs> <laughs>